Uh, she is the brand new WBC female featherweight champion. So she's gotten that very famous green belt around her waist, perhaps in her possession as we speak right now. She is the pride of Australia. She is now a perfect 10 and 0. She's the one and only Sky Nicholson. There she is. Hello, Sky champ. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. I don't have the belt on me right now. I'm currently talking to you in the hallway because what my is... team has locked me out of my room. You're kidding. So, is that why the audio yeah. sounds so bad? This is this is this is real low rent stuff, Sky. Champion status. You would never do this if this was one of those other rinky dink boxing sites. You always have perfect audio and video. For us, you come in the hallway. I know. I literally I I went to the gym and I came back talk to you and my key needs to be reset um, oh my gosh the 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 the, the, yeah, I'm talking to you by the elevators right now, the fontainebleau which i've heard eddie and everyone at matchroom just go on and on about how great it is the key is not working <laughs> what a great endorsement to be fair, it's, an, it's an unreal hotel but um i'm meant to have late checkout and it's ah this is a problem okay champ life um well we'll make do uh congratulations on the win uh, this is a huge milestone for someone who is just 10 fights into their pro career. Um, does it feel real? Does it feel like a, a thing that you've accomplished or is it still settling in? Yeah, uh, I was talking about this this with my team. Like, it's almost like, you know, when the fight was like really one-sided, it's hard to like be really excited at the end when you win because you kind of already knew you won. Like quite early in the fight, I I, I knew exactly what was how the fight was going to go, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, like when you like dream about winning that world title, it's like you're waiting for that, that moment at the end of the fight. That's like, is it going to go my way? And, and it's like this like really high pressure situation, which I obviously didn't really have. So I felt like in some ways it was maybe a little bit underwhelming, like, um, because there wasn't a huge challenge involved in winning. Um, but I am obviously very happy to, world champion <laughs> you mentioned something in a post-fight interview with the uh, matchroom youtube you said that you got compared to your training lazy in there because it was so easy and one-sided is that an accurate, mm -hmm. accurate assessment of what you were feeling yeah i felt like there were moments where i definitely probably could have capitalized um on my my like my superior skills and 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 how comfortable i was feeling in there but i did i felt like i did probably go into cruise control a little bit too much and maybe played it a little bit too safe. But um, at the same time, like my team and I, we talked before the fight and it was just win at all costs, just, just win. Um, so I, I see, I, I see both sides, like one side I'm like, Oh, I want to entertain. I want to, I want to show like the progress I've made and what I've been doing in the gym. But at the same time, it's like what I'm doing is working. Don't give her an opportunity. Don't, don't give her a chance. Right. Um, yeah, so it was like a battle within myself a little bit, and 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 perhaps even more so because you got the stoppage in the last fight, and you probably wanted yeah. that sensation and feeling and to build off of that, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, every opponent in front of you is going to be different, and those those opportunities and those openings are going to be there um, against different styles. And um, she was she was definitely looking more to break the space and to to counter rather than come overly aggressively, um, which is where you would see those openings probably a little bit more. But um, at the same time, like I watched the fight back for the first time last night and I definitely did see openings that I didn't take um, that I probably would have took in sparring, but didn't really take in the fight and, and played it a little bit safe. So um, still obviously room for improvement, um, still learning, still just a baby in the sport. So um, yeah. A baby who is ten fights in and the WBC champion. Did you did you plan on this or is this all happening a little sooner than you expected? No, it's it's definitely gone to plan. Uh, Meaning a champ this early in your career. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I think um, in women's boxing, um, that's kind of almost the expected route. I think, um, but. For me now, it's like I'm I'm obviously world champion. I've got one of the belts, um, and this is just the start, the first of many. Um, can I be, um, I don't know, a bit of a troublemaker for a moment and ask uh, why? Hmm. 
you who I, I would I would say is one of the faces of Matchroom and one of the faces of women's boxing. Why aren't you headlining this card when you're fighting for the prestigious WBC title? I mean, I don't know. I don't really have, have the answer for that. Um, I think if the show was in Australia, I definitely would have been headlining. Um, and hopefully in my next fight, that is exactly what will happen. So I'm excited for that. Um, but I think that's just where women's boxing is right now. Um, and hopefully, uh, as I keep progressing and winning, um, those bigger nights will come and I will be headlining big cards like the likes of Katie Taylor, Gentle Cameron, Amanda Serrano. Uh, did you like the idea? I mean, you, you train out of London. You're from Australia. Did you like the idea of fighting in Las Vegas for this fight? Yeah, I did. I felt like it was iconic. Um, Vegas is a, a boxing capital, really. And um, fighters dream of, of fighting for a world title in Las Vegas. So, no, I was very excited about that. I was very happy with that. Um, and uh, and especially, like, winning that WBC title in Vegas, is, it's, all very, uh, it's all very exciting. And, of course, uh, you get the win. And, uh, you know, I would never want to say it's a walk in the park because that's disrespectful to the opponent and to the, you know, to the work that goes into it. Uh, the work made it look that, quote unquote, easy. But now it leads to all the questions about, you know, can you get the big Amanda Serrano fight? She holds the other three yeah. titles. But all of a sudden mm -hmm. now there's there seems to be some new talks of Amanda and Katie Taylor. So what do you mm -hmm. make of all of this? And would you be disappointed if your next fight isn't against her? Um, I wouldn't be disappointed because I don't expect my next fight to be against her anyway. Okay. Um, I, I'm not surprised that there's now talk about the Taylor Serrano rematch. Um, Amanda obviously is coming towards the end of her career and she wants to have the big fights, the big money fights. She obviously feels that she can beat Katie Taylor as well. Um, so of course she's going to be chasing that. I mean, for me now, a fight with her isn't contender versus champion anymore. It's champion versus champion now. So for me, all I can do is keep winning, um, keep proving myself, and hopefully um, before Serrano retires, she can see me as a risk that's worth the reward instead of high risk, low reward. Um, and all I can do is, is keep beating who they put in front of me. I mean, I, I beat the number two in the world after Amanda Serrano comfortably on the weekend um i want to be challenged and i think a young champion can fight soon i'm i'm doing the right thing I'm, I'm chasing the big fights i'm chasing the challenges and um it's it's no disrespect to amanda serrano but i believe i can beat her my team believes we beat her um and i i want the opportunity to prove that whether it happens or doesn't happen i don't know um all i can do is keep beating who gets put in front of me and that's the plan. Um, and hopefully we can see that fight happen, but I don't know if it will. Why do you always feel the need to say it's no disrespect? You, you said that on Saturday as well. <laughs> Why do you always feel the need to preface your feelings towards the fight with that? Because I feel like um, Serrano counters a lot of my interviews with, I don't trash talk, I don't do this. I'm not trash talking. I'm telling her or I'm telling the world I want to prove I'm the best. And a lot of the world consider her the best, including herself. And I want the opportunity to prove that I'm the best. And it's not disrespect. It's, um, it's the game. It's the sport. And it's champion versus champion now, and I'm going to keep proving myself as a champion. I'll keep proving myself as a champion, and hopefully um, the, the risk can be worth the reward, and we can, we can make that fight happen. This is great stuff that you're giving us, uh, but the unfortunate part is the audio isn't good. Do you think we should reconnect? What it sounds like you're talking like through like a a, a muffled like thing. Do you have headphones or no? I mean, I do, but they're in my locked room. Oh and I have my no gosh! To... Um, um, uh, I just don't want. I just don't want to. Uh, did did we try reconnecting with her? I don't know why it sounds like that. Is that a thing with your phone? I'm assuming you're on a phone right now. No. Yeah, I'm on my phone, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure what it sounds like to you because I'm I'm hearing you perfectly. Yeah. But 
yeah. Okay, we fight through it, I guess. Um, I just wanted it to sound better. That's all. I'm a perfectionist, just like you out there scoring the uh, the ten round uh, shutout. Um, have you have you set your your mind to the fact that it may never happen? Like, do you think it's a greater chance of it never happening as opposed to happening at this point? I mean, I'm still hopeful. Like, that's the biggest fight out there for me currently. Yeah. Um, so, of course, that's the fight I'm going to be chasing. Um, and, of course, that's the fight I want to happen. So I don't want to lose hope. But I also understand. I understand Amanda's team's stance on it. I understand they see me as high-risk, low-reward, um, an awkward, hard-to-hit opponent. I get that. I'm a young up-and-comer. But I am a champion now as well. So all I can do is keep proving myself and hopefully we can make that fight big enough that it's it's worth it for her. Uh, can I ask, what, what did you make of the, uh, the scene in Puerto Rico about a month ago when her fight fell through, you know, an hour or so, two hours or so before the fight? Yeah. Um, I was a little bit confused and I saw a lot of conflicting things floating around social media. Um, I don't believe that she didn't want to fight um, because I do believe she is a champion and, and would would fight it at all costs, whatever it took. She would she would try to fight. So I don't think she was trying to pull out of the fight, but I did find the whole thing very strange. Okay. Um, do you think there's a chance that because that fight didn't come to fruition and if the Katie fight doesn't happen, that Nina would get, you know, a, a shot at her before you? Uh, I mean, I feel like Nina deserves her shot. Okay. She, she was there and ready to fight her that night, so I wouldn't be mad if if Nina fights her before I get to fight her. Um, I don't even know if the Nina fight will happen now. If, if there's all this talk about her fighting Katie. Um, I think Nina should really be putting pressure on the WBO, whoever it is that she was mandatory for, um, because if, if Amanda Serrano is going and fighting in a different weight division and not fighting her mandatory then that's not really to be right. talked about for, for Nina. Maybe in a unification battle with me. Right. I think it was the I IBF. IBF, was it? Yeah. Okay, well, IBF then. Um, I thought she had the WBA gold. I could be maybe. wrong. Who knows with all these so belts? I don't know. I don't know. Um, but, I, I mean, there's, there's things that could happen. There's, there's so many different things that could happen, um, depending on, I guess, Mainly on what Amanda Serrano does next, um, but there's there's going to be there's going to be big fights there for all of us. If if the uh, the Taylor fight doesn't come to fruition and June seems like a weird time mm -hmm. and the location seems a little suspect based on the reports mm -hmm. that I've seen, if only because I'm pretty sure the UFC said that they were getting first dibs. But alas, who knows? Never doubt Eddie Hearn and company. Uh, my 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 thought is you versus Amanda. Texas Stadium, Netflix, Mike Tyson, Jake Paul. What about that? Mm -hmm. Like I've said from the start, sign me up. I'm ready when she's ready. <laughs> it's no disrespect. Champion versus champion. Um, would you be Would you be open to fighting on a on a card like that? Because uh, it's a bit of a polarizing topic, right? Jake, Mike. Some people love it. Some people don't love it. Would you be okay with that? Completely. I would fight. Anywhere on any card, any day of the week. I just want I just want the opportunity to prove I'm the best in the world. Okay. And uh and just curious because the reason she had to vacate that title was because WBC didn't want to recognize the twelve three minute rounds that she's fighting under. Now that you're the champion, how would that work? I do not know. Okay. Um for me. If we wanted it to be for undisputed, I think it would probably have to be over 10 twos. But also, if she's happy to not do it over 10 twos, uh, not do it for the WBC belt and that not be on the line, I'll fight her at over 12 three minute rounds. And I've said that already as well. Okay. All right. Sorry. Damn. Now you're getting pissed. Do you get annoyed talking <laughs> about this? Mm -hmm. Do you get annoyed talking about this? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. I mean, it's frustrating because obviously I don't, I don't see the fight happening. Right. But I want people to know why I'm chasing the fight, and it's frustrating that people are still saying that it's too early for Sky. 
she would absolutely get killed by men's bra and iron. Yada, yada, yada. When did she last stop someone? Look at her fight with my food. Look at my fight with my food. That was my 10th fight. That was her 45th fight, whatever it was. That's all I'll say. Okay. I want to see uh, Amanda Serrano, Sky Nicholson face to face. Can I moderate that? I feel like there's some good heat there. Sign me up. That would be tremendous. I think that would be great I'd theater. Love that. that would be great theater. I would love that. Um, all right. And by the way, speaking of theater, what did you make of uh, your friend Alicia Baumgartner and Clarissa Shields getting into it at the event on uh, Saturday? I, I saw little bits of that yesterday for the first time. Um, I don't I don't understand why this is even like a, a fight that's right. Yeah. It's um it's very confusing. And I don't see that fight ever happening. So it's I just don't understand how that even became a thing. That a super featherweight and a right. middleweight are even entertaining it, but it's a it's little tiresome. Yeah. It's a little tiresome because every time I go on uh, on Twitter, they're arguing, but there's like a 25, 30 pound weight difference between them. On exactly. what planet is this happening? I know. I I don't even think they think the fight's ever going to happen. So I don't really understand the beef and the back and forth. But On Saturday, it seemed like they thought it was going to happen because it was getting quite heated. Yeah, I heard that people actually thought they were going to start fighting them in the day. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So it seemed yeah. like two people who are very interested in uh, in having a fight, but uh, yeah, I don't know what that's all about. So overall, uh, a, a good experience in Las Vegas. You said you would like yeah. the next one to be perhaps home in Australia. I saw a lot of coverage of your accomplishment back home. Right? What kind of reception are you getting? Like, what are you what are you hearing about you? Uh, you know, you you getting this uh, this uh, this belt and 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 climbing this mountain. I mean, obviously, we didn't have a very good run the weekend before. Um, we had three Aussies lose out in the States um, in world title fights. So um, the pressure was on to turn things around on the weekend. Um, so obviously, I think the Australian community are really excited and happy, obviously. Um, and I've been saying since I turned pro, I want to bring big fights um, to Australia. So I would love to make my first title defense at home. I would love to headline um, for the first time in my professional career as world champion, I'd love to headline at home. Um, so I hope we can make that happen. Hopefully maybe not too far away because there's, there's talk about, um, potentially fighting Raven Chapman in September, um, on the 5v5 card in Wembley. So if, if that's happening, I would probably like to, to make this homecoming in June. Okay. So not too far away. Wow, that's yeah. a quick turnaround. Yes. And then a September fight. Yeah. Okay. Active. No rest for the uh, the queen. Um, on mm -hmm. on Friday, you know, I I, I think uh, the matchroom team, from a promotional standpoint, and in particular Alex Haynes and his team, do the best work of anyone in, in combat sports. Period. Mm -hmm. And they posted a, a a very you know a very nice video, an emotional video, a beautiful video about your story and about your brothers yeah. and we've talked about you know them and 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 what they they mean to you and it was uh it was so well done and i'm just wondering taking part in it and we're showing you know the footage here you writing the letter taking part of it yeah. and then seeing the uh the finished product right before you're about to fight for the belt what were the emotions so um i actually watched it for the first time on friday when it got posted on social media that was the first time i saw the finished product and i was about to do the ceremonial weigh-in and I was bawling my eyes out. It was probably the worst timing to watch it, right. but I was like, I was crying um, just because of how beautifully pieced together it was and just seeing the footage of me changing into the footage of my brother. And, it was amazing. Um, the way it was done. Yeah. Um, I was very overwhelmed and I literally, um, Helen came out and to call me on stage and she was like, I feel like this is really bad timing, but it's your turn to, oh. <laughs> to walk on the stage. And I was just like, oh. um, but no, it was, yeah, it was an amazing piece. Um, a really, really fitting piece, I think, for 
where I am in my journey right now as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it was, it was, it was nice, very nicely done. Uh, a really nice tribute to my, to my brothers and obviously for my family all there watching as well um, on Saturday night to, to have that, um, that fire and walk. Um, yeah, it was very special. It was really nice. Well done. I'm sure they're all very proud of you. So happy for you and uh, looking forward to bigger fights and more headliners. Yeah. With your name attached to it in the very near future. I think you've earned that and uh, deserve that as well. So uh, well done. Great performance on Saturday. Delighted for you. And hopefully you get back into your room sooner rather than later because it's no fun hanging out in the hallway. Sorry about the, uh, no, it's the okay. Listen, I'm going to go on one of the YouTube channels later and you'll have a great setup and the boxing public, but we're just a rinky dink MMA show here. And so, you know, we get what we get. It's okay. Thanks, Ariel. Thanks, Guy. Congratulations. There she is, Sky Nicholson, the new WBC female featherweight champion. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it very much. Hey, if you like this video, give us the old thumbs up. Subscribe as well. You can get many more of these videos on the channel. So please do that. We would love you forever if you did so.